come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appears. Oh. Thanks for coming back for day nine of Advent Thoughts. You just caught me at the end of my nap. I don't take a nap every day, but some days it's just called for, right? Funny thing has happened with the nap. We, we associate it with little kids, and even they don't get to take them very long. We stop napping kids by the time they're oh four or five, and by the time they start kindergarten, the nap is gone. We're doing serious work now. As if somehow rest stops being necessary at four and a half years old. The amazing part is that all the science tells us it's directly the opposite. Science tells us that a nap in the middle of the day is incredibly good for our health, for our mentality, and for our spirituality. Some of the greatest minds of their time, from Einstein to Galileo to Ben Franklin, all took naps in the middle of the day famously. In fact, Ben Franklin was known for sleeping small periods, getting up, working hard, small periods, up, working hard, small periods, up, working hard. Yet, we equate it to child's play. My favorite story comes from this summer. I was reading The Right Stuff, and Gordon Cooper, who is one of the Mercury 7 astronauts, famously was super relaxed. And so as he was sitting on top of an Atlas rocket ready to, you know, launch himself on this Roman candle into space, as the mission got delayed, he decided to take a nap. And ground workers, I think it was John Glenn, had to tap on the microphone to get him to wake up before they could launch him into space. When asked about it ready, and later, he said he was more than ready to go at any moment. But it had been a long morning. He had gotten up early, not slept that well because of the excitement of the event. And he felt like a little bit of rest to clear his mind might be the best. Now, the shame of it was that everybody in NASA would come to think that he was lazy. That's often what we start to equate those who want to take a rest with. And yet... Here it is in this season where we are running around from place to place, from thing to thing, from party to party, to shopping, to back, to church, to wherever we're going, that it can get so exhausting and overwhelming. If we don't stop for a minute and take a nap or take a rest or close our eyes or at least take a deep breath, we just might forget what we're doing it all for. See, we have an amazing biblical model in Jesus himself who went from place to place. They're going to get that in a second. I can't fix it. Sorry. They went from place to place, but he also went from work to rest, from work to rest, from work to rest. From work to rest, from work to rest. Whether it was the garden, whether it was a mountain, whether it was simply just taking a deep breath and allowing Mary Magdalene to anoint his feet and hair with oil. Jesus understood the importance of taking a moment to catch your breath amidst all the chaos and busyness of our days. So in this glorious and holy season, as we prepare for Jesus to come to us. The question is, are we ready? And have we taken a breath and a rest so that we might meet him with the same energy, excitement, creativity, wonder, and love in which he met us? Y'all get out of here. And I'll see you tomorrow. God bless. Because I'm going to finish my nap. Thank <laughs> you.